Well, hello there, stamping friends. It's Tracy Rather from Plum Crazy Stamping, and it is May 17th, and time for Facebook Live. I hope that you're all doing well this evening, and hopefully you've been having fun uh, working with your paper scraps. I hope that you've been inspired by the Facebook Live videos that I've done earlier this month as well as the Scraptacular class uh, that we had last week. I also did put a very, actually, when I look back at it, kind of a lengthy article in my weekly email about the storage of all of your paper scraps. So um, just to let you know, tonight we're going to do another video, and we're going to focus on little pieces of scrap paper. And also, we're going to glam it up a bit with some glitter. So um, this is going to be fun. And uh, to kind of follow up on what I was saying with, in my weekly email, I did have uh, information on storage. Um, next week, we're going to talk about using die cuts and sentiments that you've had left over and or that you're doing brand new uh, to make cards. And then on May 31st, I'm actually going to show you the storage things that I've used for my paper scraps um, to help you get an idea of what you could do to keep things organized at your fingertips and be able to make cards with your scraps. So let's go ahead. I'm going to flip the camera down and we'll get started tonight. As you are signing on, I'll ask that you please let me know where you're watching from and your name. And then also please use the comments to um, let me know if you have any questions or feedback on the project that we're doing. Because that helps me to know what it is that I can do to uh, share uh, more information and the information that you're looking for. Uh, you know, I got out of bed today so that I could share some of my uh, stamping fun with you, as well as I had to clean up the craft room first. So we're here now. You can tell it's all straightened out. And uh, let's get started. So I'm actually going to pick up where I left off last week. If you'll recall, I showed you a card that I had made with paper strips that were all white. And they were all different sizes. And I kind of didn't know what to do with the card. And you know I had asked for your uh, input on that. And I actually got some great ideas. One that comes to mind is before putting the strips on here, I could have embossed them with different folders and actually created a very interesting card. So that is something I'm going to try in the future. But what I did do with the card that I had already put together is I decided to do um, something with my stamping daubers. And then I used uh, Night of Navy and balmy blue and I used the daubers and went ahead and brushed across all of the um, strips so that now you look at this card and you can see all of the different strips you know it wasn't as evident when they were just all white and then I decided to look into another box of scraps I had and I happened to have all these die cuts already done I just stamped my hello and added some gems, and voila, the card was done. So I guess I am happy with this. On the inside, I just did the balmy blue, not the uh, Night of Navy as well. But that's one way to finish a card that is just all white strips. And then since I was doing this, and I know that uh, you all have interest in... Uh, storage and organization of things I thought I would just show you this is actually one of our double stamp cases um, that we had when we still had some wood blocks we don't have them anymore so I don't know if you have some of these in your stash but actually somebody I met at a stamping convention 
had made these, and I think they are amazing. This foam in here actually says neutrals, brights, subtles, regals. So this can still be applicable, even with new colors. Each of these um, little daubers I labeled with the color. And then um, she had put this... Um, um, Oh, what do I want to say? The cover on here with all of the colors. So now it isn't accurate any longer. So I'm going to have to figure out if I start another one myself or what I do. She actually glued a little, um, you know, closing device to keep this together. But you can get these and or this is just a, one that I bought at the crafting store. And these are the in colors or other colors that I had. Now, I can find my own way to label this, um, but this is a great way to keep your daubers if you want to have a dauber for every one of your colors. So just wanted to kind of share that storage uh, technique with you. All right, so tonight let's look at first what we can do with little pieces. So I'm going to set this out here, and I'm going to show you just a strip of when I was digging through my scraps, I found this strip of really pretty Christmas paper, and then I've decided to be using my uh, thick white, basic white cardstock for all these cards because it's simple, and I usually always have one available to me. So I'm just going to do my um, bone folder there. Let's see. Hi, Betty. Great to see you on here. Ann Jones and Betty Rosno. Nice to see you. And then in my uh, scraps, I also had just a piece of the um, balmy blue. So that's going to be my card front. And then I decided to just take one of my punches. Now, this one actually has two different size uh, Christmas trees in it, or pine trees. They don't have to be Christmas, but pine trees. You know, you could use a heart punch, a square punch, a circle punch. Let's see, I had a flower punch. Um, you know, whatever you want. And I just want to use this scrap and try to punch as many of these trees out of here that I can and then I'm going to use them to make a card all right so I've got a bunch out of there and I also had one other scrap but just to save time I did some punching beforehand so I have a couple more um, trees already done here and then your decision is, what do you want to do? So, you know, you could just put a couple of trees with the same pattern, or, you know, we like kind of to do things in threes. Or, let's see if we can get five along the bottom here. So we could put five trees along the bottom and put a larger sentiment on here, and this could be done, right? We could also decide to go ahead and add some larger trees, but use the back side, and then maybe put a small tree in the middle, or even on the sides, maybe we want to go back to using the other side, and you could just cover the whole you know, card front with trees, and now we could put a smaller sentiment on here. Or you could cover the whole card. And then you could, um, you know, punch out a circle or a label and to put your um, sentiment right in the center. So there's really a whole bunch of choices you could use, and these are just scraps, but beautiful paper. Why would you throw it away? 
So, um, just, I don't know about you, but I'll tell you, this month, and focusing on using my scraps, has just made me feel really good about making the most of my crafting supplies. I also feel a little more excited about the fact that I'm going to, you know, I've got some new supplies now, and I can use them in good conscience, knowing that I have made the most of what I already have in my collection. So, um, I just challenge you to get a little bit of your scraps used up so that you can feel really comfortable getting some new ones. And maybe you don't have to do that with your scraps and you still are one of those people that just love to get new stamping supplies. Well, that's all good too. Um, but I like the fact that I'm using some of these up because I really liked these papers when I first got them and I still like them. So I'm enjoying them again. All right, I've decided I'm just going to do the uh, design with these on the bottom here. I kind of like that look. And all right. There we go. Then I'm going to go ahead and take, um, I pulled out a couple of different uh, Christmas uh, sentiments, which I thought, oh my gosh, it's almost, you know, middle of May, and here I am with these. Um, you know, I kind of like this one. Merry Christmas to you because it's a little wider, and I think it'll look nice on the top of this. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on a block. Try to do it as straight as I can. Okay. And then I'm going to use uh, Shaded Spruce, which is one of the colors in this designer series paper that we're using. Oh, and since this is so big, I love to ink these upside down. So I'm less likely to get ink on the edges, but yet evenly get the ink on the stamp itself. Let me go ahead and just move this down here and do my Merry Christmas to you. There we go. And you know, um, to be able to make a whole bunch of Christmas cards, I don't know about you, but I have over the years lots of Christmas paper and uh, lots of Christmas ink colors and gems and all of that. You know, you could really have a Christmas where you do a potpourri of cards. Everybody might get a different one, but just think how much fun it might be for you to uh, stamp up all these different cards. Hi, Sue. Nice to see you. And I'm just going to put my card front on here. Okay. And I think I'm going to go ahead and I am just going to glue one of these trees on the inside. I could actually glue them all along this base if I wanted to, to just make it look like the front of the card. But anyway, there we go. Merry Christmas to you. Very quick and easy. So let's say it's Valentine's Day. You could do hearts all along the bottom or put a different design of just a number of hearts stacked upon one another. So very easy way to use a small scrap, but make it look fantastic. All right, let me just slide those to the side. And I'm going to show you now the um, another way that we can use small scraps. So let me show you the pieces I have here. 
So here are the very small pieces of um, leftover paper. This is from the ice cream. I don't know if you remember that paper that we had a couple of years ago. This is the other side of it. And um, we're going to just do a little cutting. I'm going to show you how I decided to make my um, little pieces to put on this card. I also, this is the card that I want to show you how to use um, glitter. So I'm once again still using an 11 by four and a quarter inch of uh, thick white cardstock. And I have it um, scored here at five and a half. So I'm just going to put that off to the side here. Maybe I'll put it off to this side. I've decided that I do want a uh, sentiment on here. So I have um, cut a label that I'm going to put within my design. I have a four by five and a quarter inch card front, which is the size of um, where I'm going to be um, using all of my little pieces here. But before I actually um, put those on, I'm actually going to use an adhesive sheet. And this is going to be the secret to using the glitter on my card. Hi, Kathleen. Nice to see you. So let me just get my trimmer out here and let's do a little trimming on the um, scraps and on the um, adhesive sheet for our card. So got my trimmer here and I want to make this four inches by five and a quarter so let's go to the five and a quarter I need to do on this side, guys. I'll sh I can show you the four inch on the other side. So there's five and a quarter. You know, I've got a little scrap here. I'm going to show you how I even use scraps of the adhesive sheet so that they don't get wasted. So I'll just set that off to the side. And this is my five and a quarter. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut this at four inches. Okay, once again, another scrap. Don't throw these away. You will find ways to use these. But now we have our uh, piece that we need for our card front today. All right, and so then now to make these little pieces, I actually cut the piece down to one and a half inches. And then I wanted to use rectangles, and so to get the right ratio, I decided I wanted to have three quarter inches here. So I'm just going to cut these, each of them now to um, three quarters of an inch, because I have them at the one and a half inch, you know, I have a one and a half inch strip now. So just... That. Okay, and this one, a little too small. So now I've got all of these the same size. So now we're ready to make our card front. All right, so let me get my silicone mat because I don't want things sticking to um, my paper that I have here on my desktop. Remember I have this card front cut out which is smaller than the card base. This is my regular card front size of four by five and a quarter. And this is the very same size. And what I need to do is attach this adhesive sheet to the card front that I have made out of basic white. So I've lined it up on here. And now the adhesive sheets have sections where you can start peeling this off 
but you don't have to peel off the whole thing and it helps you to get everything straight. So I'm going to press, I'm going to keep this lined up and I am going to, when I know that this is lined up, Oh, darn, I... I'm going to push that down. Now, if you can help it, I try not to get my finger stuck on the other side because it will peel off little pieces of adhesive, and I'll show you what that does later. But anyway, I did peel a little piece off, so we'll see how it turns out. All right, now I'm going to flip this up the other way and take the next section of the adhesive covering and I'm going to push from the top and push this down so I don't get wrinkles, okay? So now I've got the second part of the adhesive sheet adhered. And now I'm gonna go ahead and do the third section. Peeling that off and then pushing that down. All right, so now on this side, we still have the whole adhesive section is underneath now this top piece of the adhesive covering. So now I have to take that off, okay? So I'm going to use my tweezers to get a hold of that and try not to peel up any of the adhesive if I can help it. So the thing is to get the little tip of your uh, tweezers in between the adhesive covering and um, the card front. Sometimes if you just, you can pick at it a little bit with your fingernail, you might get it to pop there. It did happen. And then pick it up with your tweezers and pull it off, okay? And once again, I'm trying not to touch that adhesive because I don't want gaps, if at all possible, okay? And the hard thing is, I want to use another little thing that doesn't take up a whole lot of space just to hold that in place and pull this off, okay? So now this whole thing is sticky. So before we go ahead and put our pieces on here, oops, I want to um, stamp my sentiment because I'm actually going to put that on here as we are placing the little pieces of our scraps, okay? So let's go ahead and stamp our uh, sentiment. I'm just going to make this a general card and it's going to say love and laughter forever after. I'm going to use uh, Coastal Cabana, which kind of matches the uh, little scrap pieces we have. I'm going to turn this upside down. Like I said, I like to be able to see that I've gotten all of the words inked up. And let me make sure that I didn't get anything on this one edge. It's notorious on this stamp to get ink on here. So I just want to make sure I don't do that. Okay. And then I'm going to just keep that straight. Do this straight. And press. And when I press my finger into that card front. All right. There we've got our sentiment done. Okay. So let's go ahead and build the card front now with our little pieces. So this is the design that I'm going to use. You can do any design you want, but I'll show you this and then you can decide if this is something that you like and that you would want to do yourself or if you would change it up. 
So I'm putting it right on the edge and then I'm going to leave a gap and I'm going to continue along right to the top of the uh, card front where I have my adhesive, leave a gap. I am not measuring, but I am trying to keep the gaps the same size, okay? And then where I'm putting a space in between, I'm going to try to put the same amount of space from row to row, and I am going to be laying this like bricks. So now, though, I want to stagger this a little bit. So this one I'm going to put off the edge, and I'm going to take another one. Stagger this one. Take another one. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead, because I want my sentiment towards the top of this card, I'm going to center this and be trimming off the edges. So we've got that in there. Now I'm going to go back to doing the layering. This is really kind of fun, you guys. Well, this one's going to go right off the edge, but I need to put it there. Okay. And then And then I'm going to do the last row. And now this time, I think I, um, let's see here. I'm going to have a little bit more to trim. This row is going to be a little bit smaller than the other rows, but that's fine. Remember, this is art. Oh, no, I'm one brick short here. Let's see. Well, I think we're going to leave that corner like that. All right. So now before we do the next step, I'm going to actually turn this over and I'm going to trim everything. And when I'm trimming, let me see if I can find my... Yeah, I usually use a certain scissors, but it's not here. So I have to use this one. Okay. Um, because it might get a little adhesive on it, but I am just going to... It's easier to cut this from the opposite side because you can see the uh, line of the card front itself. And so I'm just going to cut along the edge of that basic white card front. I'm trying not to hang on too tightly where there's adhesive on the other side. And then I'm going to look at this and see if I didn't trim something very straight or not. A couple little things I can trim just a little bit better. All right, that looks good. So now we have our card front. Now, if you were doing this on colored cardstock, you could do this without the adhesive and be gluing these down or using a tape runner. But because I've done it with the adhesive sheet, I have to do something on top to take care of all that stickiness. And I did that to be able to put my glitter on here. Okay, so hi, Kim. 
Let me go ahead and take, I'm just using a piece of copy paper on here to protect my surface. I'll tell you guys, I've been playing with this glitter this weekend, or last weekend, and I have glitter kind of here, there, and everywhere. So uh, beware. <laughs> glitter. I should have probably done this in my room that I have tile on the floor, not where I have carpet, but oh well. So I picked these are, I'm using Stampin' Up! Glitter from back in the day. So once again, using my supplies that have been in my stash. And this is fine glitter. So, I mean, they have had all kinds of glitter. This one is Blue Brilliance. And I'm going to just carefully take the lid off here. And I'm going to spread the glitter on top of um, all the areas where the adhesive is, you know, coming up between. It's actually going to be the whole card front, I guess. But wanting to make sure I put it over the areas where that um, adhesive sheet is uh, poking through. I guess it ends up being the whole thing. Okay, then let me just tap that off there. And then um, I'm going to use a spoon just to kind of rub across this and try to make sure that I am pressing it down, you know, in between all those um, pieces of designer series paper that I've put on top of here. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and pick this up and just carefully tap it off. And then actually, there's no way not to get this all over your hands. Now you could use a paintbrush, and actually I took my paintbrush into the other room, but I'm just going to use my fingers here. Isn't this amazing? I just, um, you know, I haven't played for, with glitter for a while, so to see this just made my day. It's a little bit on this edge. That isn't there. So cleaning this up does take a little bit, a little time because the glitter is so fine. And then there are these pieces where the um, adhesive either has something else on it or it's not stuck there. And I'll show you where, you know, I used a little glue to fix up areas that had that, or you can leave it. I mean, that's really up to you. Let me go ahead and I'm going to set this aside and try to get this biggest glitter mess out of our way here. Set this on my other table so I can finish making the card. Let's put another one under here. Oh, no, I got it on my computer. That'll be there a while. All right, so let me just move this aside. All right. So the last thing I need to do then is just glue this on my card front. And you could be, you know, this would be really pretty putting it on coastal um, cabana paper. 
I'm going to do a little more cleaning on this before I glue it down, but you can see how that looks. <laughs> Kim said she is an elementary teacher. She doesn't, uh, she knows what glitter is like, but it, it is um, yeah, a challenge. I totally agree. Okay. Hi, Mary Jane. I'm glad you love it. All right, let me show you what else I did just so that you can see um, this. So here's another example. And this was, uh, I think this was the Sun Prints uh, paper that was just in the last catalog. And uh, using the silver with the navy, you know, turned out so nicely. Um, and then when I told you, you know how we have... Uh, strips that are these sizes of the adhesive paper. I didn't want that to go to waste, so I actually cut them into banners. And I decided that I was going to do different size banners uh, to make this next card. So um, I thought this really was um, a winner here. The um, what I needed to do was I took the uh, white card front, just like we did with the other one. I put down the five different banners once I decided, you know, they would be four inches, three inches, and two and a half inches, because I wanted to be able to feature the uh, thank you down here. So then I took the uh, adhesive covering off these three and did the purple glitter. And then I got rid of all the extra glitter. And then I took off the adhesive covering of those two, plus um, the adhesive that I had put inside here. Obviously, it wasn't glued down yet. And then I did glitter on those pieces and cleaned them up before I could glue this all down. Now, the thing is, up close, I don't know if you can tell or if it's me being hypersensitive, but up here, a little chunk of the adhesive came away and in the middle of this strip and I used glue with a toothpick and tried to get it as flat as I could and then I put more glitter on it. Um, so they are not perfect when you look at them, but I think the effect of, um, you know, the two colors and all of that probably, you know, takes away from the fact that it's not perfect and you can just enjoy you know, the sparkle. So um, those are just some choices and how you can add more sparkle and, you know, how you can do uh, little pieces without a whole bunch of mess like I did tonight. Um, so any questions that you have, I'd be happy um, to answer them. And I want to thank you in advance for uh, joining me for Facebook Live. If you like what you uh, see tonight, I would love a thumbs up and for you to share this with your friends. Any questions, comments, uh, please put them in the comments. And then um, if you're watching this on the replay, please uh, feel free to also leave any questions or comments because I do go back after the broadcast um, to follow up with any of you that may be seeing it at a later time. So, as I said, I will look forward to seeing you all. Let me turn this upside right. Uh, next week, Tuesday, I am going to go out of town for a couple days next week. So I will be doing Facebook Live with scraps, uh, focusing on the use of sentiments and die cuts uh, next week on Tuesday evening at 6 o'clock. So I am looking forward to seeing you then. If you have any questions or I can help you in any way, please email me at Tracy, T-R-A-C-I, at PlumCrazyStamping.com. Thanks a lot and happy stamping. Bye-bye.